Uh, we expect Japan to leave last year's recession behind and to grow by 0.8% in 2015 and one and a quarter percent in 2016. This may seem modest, but it is higher than Japan's potential, and we expect the output gap to be closed by early 2017. The key to generating this growth is stronger domestic demand, consumption and investment. And on both grounds, there are reasons to be guardedly optimistic. Consumption demand is predicated on higher wage growth. Uh, Japan's labor market is very tight and corporate profitability is at a record high. And these are conditions for higher wage growth, which could lead to higher consumption. On investment, cash-rich corporates, easy financing conditions, and the ongoing corporate governance reform should give rise to higher business investment. Japan faces a formidable challenge of a declining population and labor force. The solutions to this challenge are faster productivity growth and higher labor force participation rates. Female labor force participation rates in Japan have been on the rise since the mid-2000s, reflecting tightening labor market conditions. Since the launch of Abenomics, there's been a further boost to female labor force participation rates when childcare centers were increased and also uh, cash transfers to families with children were increased. This succeeded in boosting labor force participation rates. In addition, Japan needs to make greater use of foreign labor, especially in areas where there are major shortages as well as to deregulate its agriculture and services sector, perhaps in the context of the TPP. Japan's public debt stands at an unprecedented 245% of GDP. Low and stable interest rates and the well-known home bias of Japanese investors has kept the situation under control. But there's no guarantee that interest, low interest rates will remain forever. There are going to be high pressures from population aging on spending and investor sentiment can shift abruptly. Therefore, the highest priority is to have a concrete and credible fiscal consolidation plan based on realistic growth assumptions, based on specific measures to achieve the targets, and on strengthened fiscal institutions. The plan also needs to be balanced between supporting growth and fiscal consolidation and between expenditure and revenue measures. Japan needs to break out of a deeply ingrained deflationary mindset, and we strongly support the BOJ's attempts to engineer such a regime shift. There are some positives. The exchange rate channel is working, asset prices have been increasing, credit growth has begun to pick up, and wage growth is modestly up. What more can the BOJ do? They need to stand ready to ease further, they need to improve their communications to provide stronger guidance to markets about how inflation will be achieved, and the government needs to put in place a strong program of structural reforms and fiscal consolidation to give confidence to the private sector.